CPED, Parallel Coordinates Plots for Ensemble Data. Overview of the Parallel Coordinate Plot software. We propose novel visual feature and interaction methods to address challenges in PCP that happen as a result of overplotting line segments. The overview of the PCP tool shows that the tool enables users to view different data sets via the user interface and select other user options on the right side of the screen. In order to convey the strength of the correlation between axis pairs, Correlation glyphs for each adjacent pair are presented and positions under the PCP view. This provides user with an improved understanding of the link between axis pairs, which may not be visible by glancing at the dense set of edges. One of our techniques for dense displays is based on detecting the intersection of the edges with a glyph lens. The lens offers interactive feedback to users as a function of the current mouse position that specifies the center position of the lens in dense areas. We introduce a subtraction operator in order to understand the difference between two comparable datasets. In addition to this, axis pairs can be collapsed through a selection that enables users to view a reduced set of axes motivated by redundant information. Finally, the color scale on the left is initially mapped to the edges on the first axis. This can be updated by selecting another axis. Dynamic Edge Glyph Lens Lens PCP resulting from the overlapping of the edges may cause the information to be covered. This may make it difficult for the user to interpret the existing correlation and observe patterns. Thus, we introduce a glyph lens designed to reveal information that may be obscured by edge overplotting. Observing the dynamic glyph by hovering the lens over the edges offers a summary of the edges and the average slope of the edges represented by arrows. This is a special type of lens that focuses on the space between the axes as opposed to the axes themselves. Our dynamic edge glyph lens solution offers a user interaction-based feature integrated into the PCP to uncover the trends between axes and improve the interpretation of the data. One limitation we encounter with the dynamic lens is runtime edge detection, which may slow down when there are too many edges. One way to address this challenge is to pre-compute a summary of edge intersection in a static grid, then display the metadata rather than trying to calculate the edge intersection at runtime. Multivariate Subtraction Operator Plotting two datasets on the same PCP or two adjacent PCPs is a common approach for comparison. However, both of these can lead to challenges with the large datasets as both may be dense to start with. We introduce a subtraction operator that we can apply to compare two similar datasets on the same PCP. The subtraction operator reveals the differences between similar datasets. In our case, we have ensemble data from a COVID-19 simulation, thus the simulation configurations are comparable. Subtraction is performed from group 2 and group 6, which represent patients whose age is between 20 to 29 and 60 to 69 respectively. In order to see the difference after the subtraction is performed, we rescale the dimensions which result in shifting up the plotted groups. In addition to that, we also show the zero values on the axes with green dots. The difference is jumping out more for hospitalization and deaths for the selected age groups. Kappa guided dimensionality reduction by collapsing axis pairs. The purpose of using parallel coordinates is to expose particular features into multivariate data. However, the essential information sometimes may not be obvious due to overplotting edges and a higher number of dimensions plotted in the PCP. The user option provides a new view of the data dimensions by reducing some of the redundant dimensions they don't do present a particularly notable pattern in the PCP. Collapsing axes can be guided by observing correlation glyphs. For example, 
pairwise axis with a correlation value is equal to 1 may be collapsed without loss of information. Evaluation of our techniques We provided three use cases to evaluate our techniques and reported feedback collected from the domain expert. Using the subtraction operator to compare age groups. What is the difference in output simulation parameters for patients under the age of 20 and over 70? To explore the differences between age groups, we use the subtraction operator between two age groups in the first simulation configuration. For example, we render the relationship between the simulation results under age 20, group 1, and above 70, group 7, by applying the subtraction operator to these age groups. We observed that the hospitalization and mortality numbers are much higher in group 7 compared to group 1. Feedback from domain expert. Do you think that, that you could use that to make some observations theoretically that you might not have otherwise been able to make? I think so, because I think, again, the differences are going to be specific to particular groups or particular um, compartments of the model. So I think being able to observe that and from a policy point of view, you're thinking if I change this parameter, what's it going to have if it has a negative impact on, say, younger people in terms of the number of cases, but maybe it reduces the deaths in another category, then that's going to be really useful from a policy perspective, rather than just saying, well, we've just looked at the, there's going to be more cases in the group two. Well, you know, the group two are probably going to be less impacted by COVID in general. So um, knowing how it's affecting things in a more detailed, and as you say, visual way, I think would be really, really useful. What is the influence of the probability of infection input parameter? To explore the influence of important input parameters, we sorted simulations by p and value and included all age group in simulation 3 with the lowest p and value and simulation 101 with the highest p and value. Then use subtraction operator to analyze the difference between these simulations. As a result of the subtraction, Simulation 101 shows a very clear difference for all output parameters compared to simulation 3. Do you think that something like this could save you time? How, how do you do this? How would you try to do something like this currently without this software? How do you try to figure out what the most influential parameters are? So we have to do full mathematical sensitivity analysis um, of the model. Um, so yeah, I guess you could look at things like histograms of the output. So again, they would tend to be either visualized viewpoints, but probably nowhere near as sophisticated as this, or kind of formal mathematicals where you look at things like the derivatives of the output as a function of the different parameters. But that's a lot more complex and time consuming than something like this, I think. How how long would something like that take, do you think? Um approach. So it really depends on on the complexity of the model and the number of simulations you have to do, but um, probably at least a couple of hours, I would think, to run mathematical analyses. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you, you generally do it as a kind of Monte Carlo approach as well across lots and lots of simulations as you're plotting here. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's lots of different questions that you could ask of this in terms of the sensitivity across time, across different age groups, across different classes. And again, you'd have to run a separate simulation or a separate sensitivity analysis for each of those different things. Whereas here, you kind of have the option of interrogating that all in one go, mm -hmm. or very quickly switching between the different um, questions that you might want to ask of the, of the model. Kappa guided dimension reduction in the PCP. We examined the PCP for the first simulation and the correlation glyphs under each axis pair. We observed that there is always a direct relationship between the mean, mean, and max values of each parameter in the output. We used this observation to reduce the redundant dimension and produce a new image with redundant information removed. The functionality reduction technique we utilize by collapsing axis pair results 
in an image that reduces the number of dimensions by almost 50% in the PCP. Note that the pairwise glyphs are also preserved and remind the user of the redundancy. Do you think that these features could let you do anything or see anything that you might previously have not been able to see? To see? Make, make some, some new observations or new hypotheses? So I think, it, I mean, one of the common aspects of these types of models is over parameterization. So kind of parameter redundancy when you try and do estimation of the parameters. If the the model is not sensitive at all to the input parameters, then no matter how much you try and do any sort of inference, then it's it's not going to be useful at all. Um, so from that perspective, I think it would be useful in terms of you know, the standard approach if you've got parameter redundancy is to do some sort of model reduction. Um, and again, that's quite complex to do without a good understanding of the model and where it's, you know, the lack of sensitivity arises. So I think it would be really helpful in deciding how to think about either combining outputs into single, you know, if there was um, kind of age um, differentiation or there was no impact on the parameters on age, then I think you would see that here. Um, and in terms of looking at the different compartments, I think that would be really useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd say parameter redundancy generally is quite a useful way of, or model reduction um, guiding this would be really helpful there. That's fair. Um, Focus and context, highlighting edges and color options. We also introduce rendering the positive and negative sloped edges by right-clicking on any areas of the PCP using focus and context. Another option offered by the tool is to display data labels and points where an edge crosses the axis by hovering the mouse over the edges and highlighting them. Finally, we offer six different color scales for color mapping in the PCP. Thanks for watching.